Uh, let's 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 do a couple more of these. Um, in the filming, Violet two three five six. We've done a Violet two three five six. <laughs> she couldn't refresh herself easily, but she has, she <laughs> she wanted to talk about the filming. Um, there's, there there doesn't seem to be any edit in that. How how did that feel as an actor? Because you clearly you I think when we did it, you'd just done series two of Sherlock. Yeah, I think yeah, is that probably, right? Yeah, probably. Or maybe I hadn't started. I don't think I had started. But you done series so you've done series one. one yeah. You done yeah. series one. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so used to yeah. all this kind of stuff, microphones yeah. Yeah, and yeah, taking yeah. a position mm. and and. But then when we did, we did very differently to that. How mm. did it feel for you, the filming of, the filming of the thing? Oh, it's so freeing because the most boring thing about filming is holding Could a position. You, you know, moving. You know, can you can you. You know, not, not don't put your hands there because otherwise, there, yeah. <laughs> otherwise exactly. nobody will exactly. see Andrew's exactly. face. Exactly. <laughs> your mark, you do the thing, and then you sort of change it. So to be completely free of it was incredible. Yeah. And also, it would have been really weird to do it having had total freedom before. But yeah. I, I, I remember on the day not thinking. I mean, there was a little tiny edits just to re. Position the camera, I think. Andrew, well, because it's on the ten-minute stock. It was a ten-minute? You only yeah. film ten minutes at a time. But we didn't stop and have a banana, and we sort of just came. I just kind of walked off and kind yeah. of came back on. So yeah. I didn't sort of view it as a, which is why I was so comatose because <laughs> 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 we did it three times in a row. But then the last take, and we did. Yeah. Remember something happened that was yeah it was best, just magical it? yeah it just and 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 because what we did was we were going to do the first third again yeah we were and then we just went and then on. and then and then I said to you look you really you really hit it just yeah, let's do it. let's yes, just do exactly. it again let's just keep going that's the thing it's about re relaxing and not yeah. acting and not worrying yeah. about it and when you're sort of enjoying it it's all about enjoyment I think yeah do you I find um, writing enjoyable do you know what I really do I think I'm at my happiest. I think I really think I'm at my happiest when I'm writing, and you know it's not always enjoyable. Sometimes it's. It, it, I mean, I, it, there's a big, there's a lot of romantic mythology surrounding the agony of the writer. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people will kind of talk about the, how excruciating it is to kind of, cut, you know, cut into your soul, or whatever. But really, do you know what I mean? Go and get a job at Gateways. That's yeah, agony. Yeah, yeah. Is when you've got a supermarket manager telling you he wants those yeah. shifts out. He wants wants the wants the shelves full. He wants it fronted up. You've got and you, you're not leaving until you've done it. And it's Friday night and it's 8:30 and you know you've got another. T That's agony totally. compared to the writer's job. I get to go into my office. I, I go to work. I cycle to work ideally. Put the coffee on. Listen to a bit of music on iTunes. Read the Man United website. Look at the BBC Sport, do my emails, and then maybe do four hours writing. Yeah. What an easy job! <laughs> yeah. It's really great. Yeah. And when I'm when I'm <laughs> when I'm when it's going well, when it's going well, I, I'm at my happiest. R really, really, really. And what about when? It, what happens when you have a block? When you're like, oh, do you know what? It's really funny. Touch wood. I've not. I I I don't think I don't think it's something I've suffered from very badly. But do you not? Do you have a sort of? Do you have a uh, like? Oh, this is clumsy. I need to make this a bad thing. Or do you? It's a bit yeah, but sometimes that's quite nice. Yeah. So and sometimes you've got to write through the clumsy bits. There's yeah. a great phrase. The, the brilliant playwright Roy Williams uh, has this phrase: "You don't get it right, you get it written, and then you go and refine yeah. it." Yeah. So you know that it's not that, necessarily. And then you can go back and work on it. Seawall. Uh, Seawall yeah, came. Seawall came out in one go. It did, didn't it? It, re it was really weird. It really did. Um, so talk a little bit about, about how you, um, you, you, you wrote it. I don't want to repeat too much from the YouTube film, which yeah, is on, in, <laughs> in which I think it's fair to say I talk at length. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but no, 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 no. But, no. Um, but I will talk, because it would be interesting to say something different about it. Yeah. Uh, just in terms of the physicality Please, God, of actually, so <laughs> for God's sake. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> maybe I'm pause, <laughs> and maybe pause no, in between, no. to let you no, have, no, say no, something silly. more interesting than just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, nice yeah. one, Andrew. <laughs> thanks for that. Yeah, thanks for that, mate. Um, um, do what? My main memory, the fi my main. Was it the first time you'd written a monologue? No, because I'd written monologues in pornography and in one minute. Yes. But uh, it was. It, it, the main thing I remember getting the email from you after you'd been to see Harper Regan, and then it just crystallised. And I had some things I knew. I knew it was going to really be kind of about me. 
and my relationship to Scarlett, to my daughter, and my relationship to Oscar and Stanley, my sons, and my relationship to my wife. I knew that was going to be the heart of it. I knew it was going to be about my relationship to my father-in-law, but I wanted to fictionalise it. So when you're fictionalising something, you need some kind of dislocation. Otherwise, it's just autobiography. Yeah. And, and, and there were some things in the nature of the commission that allowed that, one of which was this consideration of light. And the script is full of references to light. Mm. And that's because we were playing in the, in the broken space mm. where we had no, no lighting, you know? We didn't have any of these kind of lights we've got here. So I was really fascinated. That's why one of, you know, one of the lines about the existence of God is in, it's in the way the light falls over the city at the start at the end of a day. Um, that's because I knew we were playing it at the end of a day yeah. in, in a city. Yeah. So there's a lot, so I knew all that stuff and I kind of, and I think that's why Alex is a photographer, is because I became fascinated by light and capturing light. But there was still, it was still too close and then I got the email from you after you'd been to see my play Harper Regan at the National and you were very enthusiastic about that. Yeah, what an evening. And and then I just knew it was for you. It was going to be for Andrew Scott. And then I could, I was no longer writing autobiography. I was imagining yeah, you. Yeah, you can have the sort of, yeah. It's that separation. Yeah, it's sort of like a tension, isn't it? Completely, <coughs> really completely. And so my main physical memory of the writing it was, um, I'm, I'm a planner, you know, when I'm writing, I'm a planner. I plan things really carefully. And this one, I, I, I knew there was going to be the dual technique. Yeah, that's, mm. that's really interesting. There's going to be two things going on. One, one, was, one of which was going to be, um, well, there's three things going on. Yeah, there's three things going on in the script. There's uh, the gesture of Alex talking to his audience or his camera yeah. in the film is kind of present tense. Yeah. And then you've got two past tense narratives playing out. Yeah. One is the story of his marriage and of Lucy and of Lucy's birth and death. Mm. And related to that is all is all the childhood reference, and then the other is his relationship with uh, Arthur, and with that is a consideration of the existence or non-existence of God, mm. and that became something that was really important to me, and at the time, and still, you know, I, I would think of myself as being an atheist. I'm not quite as <coughs> antitheist as I was once at the time of writing this play weirdly i was i was really strongly antitheist which is a word coined by christopher hitchens to describe not just atheism but active opposition to religion okay. i was really right. like that yeah. and i'm less like that now but uh weirdly weirdly in this play i started off very much wanting to disprove the existence of god and somehow found as a dramatist that the best way of doing that was to give the most powerful line in that argument to the, to the Christian, effectively, yes, to the religious yeah. person, mm. when, finally ans when he finally, and I, I think when, when, when he finally answers where God is. He's in the way some people move. Exactly. And, yeah. and the feeling of water and the, the light. The space between two numbers. <laughs> yeah. That all of a sudden I thought, fucking hell, I've convinced myself into the belief. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember there's something that you said. I remember, but I can't remember. <laughs> no, but isn't there something where somebody said to you about the existence of love? Yes. Yeah. What's that? I had a, this conversation with a f uh, friend of mine uh, debating the existence or non-existence of God, and they said to me, well, do you believe in love? And I said, yes, I did. You know, as a as a husband and as a father of three children, it'd be kind of weird to not believe yeah. in love in a way. And, the, and she said, well, if you believe in love, that's an intangible abstraction. Why are you so uh, dissatisfied, dissatisfied with other people's belief in the intangible abstraction that is God? Yeah. You know, if you can believe in love, why can't you believe in God? Mm. The same levels of logic apply to both. So don't get so hung up about not believing in God if you, if you do believe in love. Mm. And that, I think that really sits in this play. It does, Phil. It, it does. And because it doesn't, it, it's not about organized religion. It's, the theme is that it's not yeah. organized religion, it's just about. And it's something that informed all three of us. The person, the person absent from this, who's absent from the film, sadly as well, is George Perrin, who yeah. directed the stage play. Yeah. And he was fascinating because his dad is a vicar. Yeah. So he was raised absolutely with this consideration yeah. of, the, of the existence or non-existence of yeah. God. 
Yeah. Uh, and and he talked a lot about that in rehearsal. I think yeah. it was really, yeah. he was, his, you yeah. know, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's it's something that really fascinates me. I think my as I get older, I'm more forgiving of it. There was a time, I think what's, you know, it's just a shame that in certain contemporary political contexts, religion has become so abused and mm. assimilated by quite savage organizations, whether that's the assimilation of the Muslim faith by Islamists, whether it's the, the kind of the justification of, uh, of quite aggressive acts in the Middle East by the Israeli government, but on 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 grounds of uh, of, of that being kind of uh, a defensive response by a Jew by the Jewish religion, whether it's the hardcore uh, free marketeering and then kind of repression of kind of sexuality of Christianity, and that's all a real shame. Yeah. It's kind of it's nasty and it's pernicious, and I I hate it, <coughs> and I think that really informed my antitheism. But I did have a moment where I thought, if you replace the word God in all hymns with the word love, it actually makes something that describes completely how I feel about the world. Mm. And I think the writing of Seawall became a consideration of the relationship between God and love. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's why it worked to rehearse, and I think that's why it affected so many people as yeah, well. Yeah, I think that's really true.